Okay, good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, afternoon ma'am. Okay, I hope you're uh, feeling very well this afternoon. Um, for today, we are uh, on to studying another literary piece entitled Gaffer Boy. But as we always do, we should uh, begin this right. And so may I ask um, Faye to please read this to lead us in prayer. This is actually prepared by one of your classmates, Meg. Okay, so um, Faye, can you um, read this and lead us in prayer? Yes, teacher. Let us all bow down our heads and feel the presence of the Lord. We pray for your love and compassion to abound us as we walk through this challenging season. We ask for wisdom for those who bear the load of making decisions with widespread consequences. We pray for those who are suffering with sickness and all who are caring for them. We ask for protection for the elderly and vulnerable to not succumb to the risk of the virus. We pray for misinformation to be curbed that fear may take no hold in our hearts and minds. As we exercise the good sense that you in your mercy provide, May we also approach each day in faith and peace, trusting in the truth of your goodness towards us. We pray for guidance as we continue to learn and pursue our education despite this ongoing COVID crisis. We ask that we may be able to achieve our dreams for ourselves and for our family. Amen. Paul. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Hazel. Um, just a friendly reminder, I have already given the literary piece ahead of time for you to study. For you to read on your own and that is why I'm um, a little expecting that you have the answers in your mind for my questions later on because we are going to do uh, this discussion through a question and answer um, way. <laughs> so I hope you are ready for uh, today. Okay, so we are going to play a game and we are going to have fun with this. Um, I ha we have already played this a lot of times inside our classroom, and so you know the mechanics. Okay, so for us to better understand the literary piece, uh, which you have read in advance, I know you have encountered their difficult words, and I have listed them. I have listed actually five, and you have to tell me the word. By looking at these pictures, uh, you can unscramble the letter so you can get the word. Uh, you can also study the meaning provided there before you make your educational guess. Okay, so you have your scrambled letters there. Who wants to try number one? Meg? Teacher, is it Kafir? That is right, Meg. Right. Meg, Meg studied her lesson or studied the literary piece because the, the, the word kafir is actually found in the story, right, Meg? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so it's kafir. And can you please use it in another sentence or in, in a sentence, um, Meg? Our tour guide was a kafir. Okay, thank you, Meg. That's a very nice sentence. For the next word, what do you think? Uh, is this so we can see um, groups of people with a uh, certain type of dressing or costume for yes things that are common to them um who would like to try number two hazel hello teacher is my voice clear pa yes you're very audible hazel thank you for asking okay, pa. um Teacher, I think the word here is tribe. Okay, very good, Hazel. That is tribe. And now can you use it in a sentence, even a simple sentence? Okay, Paul. Um, my friend belongs to a tribe where they like eating coconuts. Okay, that's very nice. And um, I haven't encountered any tribe or maybe it's not actually common to them lang. So... What tribe is this? <laughs> or it's just an example? I don't know their tribe, ma'am, but they like eating coconuts. Okay. okay thank you, uh, Hazel, for number three. Um, this is for you, Riza. 
Can you guess the word, Riza? This is a bit difficult, but you have clues there. We have the first picture, re, and then we have luck. So what do you think is that? Not willing or eager to do something. Teacher, I think this is reluctant. Okay, it's actually reluctant. It's reluctant. Very good ah, uh, reason. Reluctant. That's a very good reluctant. guess. Reluctant. Reluctant. Okay. And for our fourth word, um, let me have Julia. For the, for the fourth word, teacher, is it a far seed? Okay, it's actually a far side, but you are right. You just uh, followed um, the order of the letters there, I think. So that's why you read it a part seed. But everybody say apartheid. 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 Okay, very apartheid. good. And it's a former apartheid. social system apartheid. in South Africa, which is actually very, very sad class because in South Africa, they have this system we're in. Uh, it separates whites from blacks. And it's very evident everywhere, like when you're in street, um, bench benches there are labeled for whites only. Uh, the blacks are not allowed to sit on that bench, and that's very sad, right? I hope you have realized that while you are reading the literary piece. Did you? Yes, yes, yes sure. Uh, it's very okay. sad. <laughs> for our final word, um, can we have her? Angry and aggressive. Uh, is it? Belligerent, ma'am. Very good. Uh, pearl belligerent, as we have our clues there. Our first picture is Bell, and then we have this is actually Edge or Rent. I think um, the last picture and the second picture are interchanged. So I'm sorry for that, but very good, Pearl, for guessing it right. Okay, now that we have already unlocked all the difficult words, let's now get uh to know who is behind this literary piece this magnificent literary piece okay so the author of this literary piece class please pay attention um is mark mathabain there he goes can you see the picture yes teacher yes, okay so i'm going to read to you the profile of mark mathabain and i want you to Take note of them because later on we are going to unravel a very interesting um, matter or thing about the literary piece, which has a connection to the author. Okay, so Mark Mathabane grew up in South Africa. He spent childhood in an unheated shack with no electricity or running water. In simple words, Mark Mathabane is from a poor family. He learned to love school and received a scholarship for high school, and he also received a tennis scholarship to South Carolina College. Okay, so there you have it, our author for this literary piece, Mark Mathabain. Mathabain. Again, again, sorry about that. Again, I want you to take note of the details found here because later on we're going to unravel an interesting um, thing about this literary piece in connection to the author. Okay, so I hope you get all of this. Next, um, you can see another picture here, and I want you to study it for a few more seconds before I flash the first question. So I have two questions related to this picture. Okay, are you now ready? Yes, teacher. yes teacher. For the first question, can I have Julia? Read first the question and then give me the answer. What are the qualities of the mother in this picture? Uh, teacher, I think from the picture, the mother, the mother seems kind, loving, and um, very supportive to her child. Okay, thank you, Julia. That's a very genuine answer. Very I very believe answer, that right? you are coming from um, that feeling because you have a very good mother. <laughs> okay, so um, aside from what Julia has said, this actually pertains to a mother who is um, willing to do everything for her child because as you can see, he's carrying a basket um, 
on her head and then carrying her child as well. So it's like uh, doing things at the same time in order for um, ends to meet. OK, so we can infer things from this picture. OK, very good, Julia. For the second question, can we have Riza, please? Teacher, what is the question? Ah, OK. Po. Do you think the mother in this picture the same with the mother in the story? Yes, teacher. Um, I believe that all mothers are the same, that they all love their children um, unconditionally. Po. OK, thank you, Riza. But in the story, as I have said, again, this is to remind you um, that I have already given uh, the piece ahead of time. And the question here pertains or is asking us if the mother here is the same with the mother in the story. And Riza answered yes. And that is correct because the mother in the story is a very supportive mother to uh, her child. And we are going to find out more about it as we go on with our discussion. OK, thank you, Riza. And because you are very prepared and you are ready for uh, today's session, I can see that I'm very impressed. That is why that's cheers to another set of questions. Okay. As I've told you, this um, session um, will be question and answer because I have already given you um, the reading material. So we will not be spending um, a lot of time dwelling in the story. OK, so for the first question, can I have Meg? What is the boy's initial attitude towards going to school? From what I remember, teacher, the boy's initial attitude towards going to school was um, he was not very interested about going to school at first. OK, that is correct, Meg. Very good. He was not interested because he was very afraid to be getting bullied inside the classroom because of perhaps his skin color or because of his economic status, etc. There are lots of factors on why a student does not want to go to school. And um, I'm sure that as you go along your studies, you have also encountered classmates and that is why you have to be very kind. You don't have to bully your classmates, OK, because that will affect their interest in going to school. OK, you would not want to be the reason on why a student uh, does not want to go to school. OK, for the second question, can I have Hazel? Yes, ma'am. Um, what do you think is his mother's reason for encouraging her son to go to school? Um, for me, ma'am, I think the mother believes that education will give a lot of opportunity to her son. That's why she forced her son to go to school. OK, thank you, Riza. Not really forced, but encouraged him to go to school. OK, thank yes, you, Riza. I OK, for the third question, um, can we go back to Meg? What is what is the Kafir boy skill which made his way through college? I think um, this is referring to his skill in um, in in his sport, okay, in the sport got, that he has. Right, you got it, Meg. Okay, so Kafir, the Kafir boy in the story is very skilled in tennis. And you can relate to that because I know a lot of you who is very good at playing badminton, who are also basketball players. OK, so Lucky. I know that and I'm sure that you can somewhat relate to the story of Kaffir Boy. And did you know that, as mentioned here, um, it is his skill in playing tennis which got him scholarship? OK, so can you recall that in the story? OK, so very good. Okay. Now we are going now to have another game entitled Don't Let Your Ice Cream Melt. We will do this very quickly. You, you already know the mechanics because we have played this a lot of times, a lot of time inside our classroom. So I'll jump into the cones and please tell me the right scoop that would fit the granny cone. Tell me the flavor first and then read to me what is inside that uh, scoop. 
Can you do it, Riza? Yes, teacher. Um, the scoop the scoop for Grady is together with Mark's mother. This person is also determined to encourage Mark to go to school. Okay, what is the flavor, Riza? I sorry, but I think the color of that scoop is color pink flavor strawberry, ma'am. Strawberry. Okay, very good, Riza. Um, let's have the setting for the last school. Next, we have the principal. Can you? Tell me the right scoop to fit the principal cone. Um, we have here pearl. Um, um, I think for the principal, it was a stro strawberry scoop. The the third strawberry scoop. Okay, <laughs> that is right. I have actually here uh, notes about this, but can you read to me what's inside that strawberry scoop? But I have here that it's right. It's actually strawberry scoop. Um, the school, the school authority, who promised to remedy Mark's problems. Okay, thank you, um, Pearl. Now we have the father. Can you give me that scoop for the father, um, Faith? Yes, teacher. For the father, um, it's the matcha flavor scoop, mom. The green one. Okay. That's very the, nice. Yeah, um, yes, yes, teacher. The person who had beaten Mark's mother, he does not want to spend money for the his son's schooling. Okay, the character of the father in the story class is actually um, opposite to, to the mother. If the mother is very supportive of, uh, of the Kaffir boy's education, um, the father is not. And that is very sad because in a family, it's important that both the mother and the father are supportive of their children's education. Okay, let's have uh, mother, the scoop for mother. I know there are two scoops fit to the mother cone, but please mention only one. Can you do it for me, Julia? Um, um, I remember the chocolate scoop. Chocolate scoop for... Um, for the mother in the story, um, illiterate but determined to have Mark drink from from the well of knowledge. Okay, thank you, Julia. That's very nice. And as we were discussing, you can already actually guess which of the scoops because the mother actually is my favorite character, and we can infer that. Uh, her scoop or characteristic we can guess is the best, right? The best characteristic among the scoops. Okay, for the last character, we have Kafir. Can you tell me, can you pick the right scoop for Kafir, um, Faye? Faye, are you still there, Faye? Yes, teacher. Okay. <laughs> for Kafir, ma'am, the cheese scoop. It's color yellow. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think it's it? cheese. <laughs> Can you um, read it? it is. Yes, what? Well, um, it is the boy who realized in the end the importance of going to school. Okay, you are all very good class. I'm very impressed, and my heart is happy knowing that you have read, uh, the literary piece. Now let's go back to the last cone, which is the setting. What is the setting of the story class? Pick the right scoop, please. Um, uh, Meg. Mom, um, if I remember correctly, it was a blueberry scoop. Okay. Um, for the <laughs> setting, it's uh South Africa, mom. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Meg. Okay, so as I hope that you are not noticing that we started from discussing uh the author of this literary piece, and then um we studied the characters and the setting. Now let's proceed to the series of the of the events found in the story. I have here a ladder and I named it success. Now, can you fill in every step of the ladder in order for us to somewhat summarize the story? So I have here how many steps? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven steps to Mark Mathabane's stairway to success. So can you fill in the first step, uh, Hazel? Yes, teacher. Um, from the first step, I think the beginning is that Mar uh, Mark's mother wants him to go to school. 
Okay, thank you. How about for the second step? I have here my version for that. Mark Matabain is born into a poverty-stricken black family in South Africa. How about for the next letter? Can you fill it in? Uh, Meg. Um, I think the next um the next part of the story is that um uh, Mark refused at first. Initially, he's not interested to go to school because he was scared of being bullied. So he thought of it as an arena of torture. Okay, wonderful, Meg. I have, again, a version for that. He started school through his mother's insistence. But before that, as, I, as you have said, he was very reluctant. That's, again, the meaning of reluctant. Not so he doesn't really. want to do yeah. it. He doesn't want to go to school. For the next one. Mark graduated from primary school at the top of the class and earned a scholarship to pay for secondary school, enabling him to continue his education. So because of uh, Mark Mathabane's mother's perseverance in encouraging him, he did go to school and finished primary in and finished, yes, primary. And after that, he went to secondary and uh he met some significant people we have here the smith people for his grandmother serves as the gardener this opened the world of tennis for mark okay so this is the sport that i am telling you a while back uh okay from then he started playing tennis and in high school he joined a school tennis and got introduced to wilfred horn the owner of the exclusive tennis ranch okay to complete the letter of Success, can you tell me the ending of the story, which is actually in connection with um, the Kaffir boys playing tennis? So can you tell me the ending of the story, uh, Riza? Um, the ending of the story, teacher, is that he was able to see the importance of education and that he was able to top his class. Okay. Through tennis, uh, Mark decided to join the South African uh, Brewers Open tour Tournament. And, and through that, he was able to earn a scholarship through college. Okay, so because of tennis, he joined a tournament, won it, and then he received a scholarship out of it. Okay, so before we forget uh, everything, anything about what I've said earlier <laughs> on the unraveling of the mystery of the story, if you would notice, uh, the title of this success letter is Mark Mathabane's Stairway to Success. And who is Mark Mathabane? He was the author of the story. Now, can you continue what I am uh, implying? Can you get it? Who is Mark Mathabane? Aside from being the author of the story. Julia, can you guess? Is the story, ma'am, also somewhat biographical? Correct. To Mark Mathabane. Yes, you got it right. Bingo, Julia. So, Mark Mathabane, the author of the story, is actually also the major character of the story. And <laughs> take note, class, that this is a real story. Okay, so you have to pay attention to the details, to how he persevered, and to how he used his skill in tennis in order for him to earn a scholarship and somehow you may also apply the learnings that you have had here um for you to be successful in life okay because you are just grade eight now and you still have a lot of years to go <laughs> before um you consider yourself successful okay so very good i'm very impressed with you but um for me to assess um your understanding of the story i have three questions again so for the first question can you answer it what does the mother promise the boy would like to answer can you do it Faye? hello teacher um what does the mother promise the boy um from the story mom I believe the mother the promised mother the boy promised. that the mother will send him to school. Okay, very good, Riza. And for the second question, what is the boy's real realization towards the end of the excerpt? I think uh, Riza has also mentioned this a while back. 
actually in the ending he realized how important education is and how education can play um, a very important role in trying to rise above his economic situation because as we all know the kaffir boy uh, comes from a not so well of family in fact in fact from a poor uh, family okay, um, for the last question if you were the character would you also be persuaded by the mother's viewpoints why or why not can you answer this again hazel i'm not hazel please yes teacher um if i were the character Yes, ma'am, I will also be persuaded by the mother's viewpoint because she did not stop in convincing the character there to see the importance of education. Okay, thank you, Riza. I think it's um, very important to think or to note that uh, children who have kind, loving, and supportive mother are very lucky, right? So... Have you come to the point of realizing that even if you are just grade 8 students? Riza? Riza? Uh, with heart. Yes, Riza. Okay. Now, uh, reflect on this, please. Education is one way to a good future. You just give me um, anything that would uh, talk about this. Or even just one line. Can you do it, Pearl? Um... Regarding this uh, statement, uh, education can be life changing because even if at the start you think um, your situation is hopeless, education can give your life direction. Okay, thank you, Pearl. That's a very good realization. Okay, so before we end the meeting class, um, I'd like to discuss with you some activities that you have to do for tomorrow. So you have to prepare, you have to conceptualize. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So we still have another question here before the activities. So I, ha I told you I have a lot of questions because this session is really for question and answer. Okay, I believe this is the last one. What life lessons did you learn from the story? Although it's we have been repeating the essence, the theme of the story. I still want to hear it from you. Can I hear from Faye? What life lessons did you learn from the story, Faye? Teacher, that we must obey our parents and that even we're poor, we should always continue dreaming and doing our uh, uh, dreaming. Okay, thank you, Faye. And that... Um, we should prioritize education, right? Okay, so thank you, Faye. Now for the activities that I was telling you, here they are. You are six in my class, and I will gr group you into three. For group one, we have Riza and Faye. Group two, Hazel and Julia. Group three, Meg and Pearl. So for group one, I want you to chant a yell about success and education. Don't worry because I will be sending the rubrics in our group chat so you have something to follow. Okay. Second group, showcase a parade of different professions. And for the third group, compose a song related to the theme of the story. Okay, don't be confused because this activity that you will be doing for tomorrow is separate from your assignment. Okay, so for your assignment class, I want you to define success in your own words um, by... Uh, actually, this is an acronym, so you have to start every word uh, using this letter. So we have S-U-C-C-E-S-S -S in order for you to define success. Okay, is that clear? Yes, teacher. Okay, so that is all for this afternoon. Thank you for attending class and I appreciate your interest and I can see that you have studied very well on this particular literary piece. Okay, so for your questions, you can just contact me with the following. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Okay, so see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Okay.